Hi, everybody. This is Katie Bailey, and we're going to be talking about the Neck Imaging Reporting and Data System, aka NIRAD. The ACR, NIRAD's committee, developed these recommendations for a standardized lexicon and risk stratification system to be used in the interpretation of surveillance imaging in patients who have been treated for head and neck cancer. NIRADs can be used for the following cancers when patients undergo CT, MRI, and or PET for surveillance. These include squamous cell carcinoma of the skin of the head and neck and aerodigestive tract, as well as non-squamous cell cancers of the head and neck, including salivary gland tumors, sinonasal tumors, orbital tumors, and thyroid cancer. The objectives of this talk, we're going to discuss the NIRAD's categories, show examples of each, and do a practice case at the end. This is an example of something that I see all the time. Here is a mass involving the right palatine tonsil. Here's some right level two lymphadenopathy, and here it is showing hypermetabolism on PET scan. The categories of NIRADs include both the primary tumor site and neck, and we are using this to look for recurrence. Each case is assigned a category zero to four based on the imaging suspicion. Category zero is incomplete, meaning additional uh, studies are needed or prior studies are needed to compare the current studies to. Category one means no evidence of recurrence. This management is routine surveillance. Category two is low suspicion. This can be an ill-defined, non-mass-like area or areas of soft tissue with only mild differential enhancement or mild FDG uptake. The management recommendation for category two is direct inspection if possible or short interval follow-up with contrast-enhanced CT or additional PET for deeper abnormalities. Category three is high suspicion, and this would be something like a discrete, new, or enlarging lesion with marked enhancement or intense focal FDG uptake. The management recommendation for category three is biopsy. Category four is a definite recurrence. This can be pathologically proven or definite radiologic or clinical progression. The management recommendation for category four is treating the disease with or without biopsy. And a morphologically abnormal feature that is definitive can include new necrosis or gross extranodal extension as evidenced by invasion of adjacent structures. Category one is expected post-treatment changes. This is non-mass-like distortion of the soft tissues. This is low-density mucoid mucosal edema, and there should be no abnormal FDG uptake. There can be some diffuse linear mucosal enhancement after radiation treatment, but definitely nothing mass-like. So this patient had a left oropharyngeal cancer, that palatine tonsil. You can see a mass involving the tonsil. Here it is showing activity on that FDG PET. And post-treatment on the CT scan, we see some distortion of the normal architecture, but no mass-like appearance. And on the PET scan in the area of the cancer, that left tonsil, there is no abnormal uptake. This would be a category one, routine surveillance. Category 2A, the scan demonstrates focal mucosal enhancement, but not mass-like. There can also be mild to moderate FDG uptake, but again, you don't want it to be mass-like. In this case, if possible, you recommend direct visualization. So this patient had a nasty laryngeal cancer. You can see very avid uptake on the PET scan. Here it is on the coronal image. And status post laryngectomy, the patient has some linear uptake on the FDG PET, but really no mask-like enhancement on the contrast enhanced CT scan. So this would be a category 2A, and this would be to examine the surgical site. Category 2B would be deep, ill-defined soft tissue, not a discrete mass, little to no differential enhancement, and mild or moderate FDG uptake. In this case, the patient post-surgery -surg had a floor of mouth flap in place, extensive surgery in the neck. On the PET scan, you can see there's an area of abnormal uptake at the level of the thyroid cartilage, superficial to it. On the CT scan, you can see some soft tissue thickening, but really no mass-like enhancement, just some soft tissue, some distortion of the architecture. Unfortunately, on the three-month follow-up scan, you can see that soft tissue has increased, the FDG avidity have, has increased, and this one did actually end up being tumor. Category three, a new or enlarging primary mass or lymph node. 
It can be a discrete nodular mass with differential enhancement and intense focal FTG uptake. Again, the recommendation is image guided or clinical biopsy. This was a large floor of mouth cancer, also involving the oral tongue, across the midline, a very bulky tumor. Here it was on the original PET scan. The first post-treatment PET showed no abnormal or mass-like uptake in the area. Unfortunately, the routine surveillance led to another follow-up PET scan, and you can see a new irregularly enhancing almost necrotic mass in that more anterior floor of mouth, avid uptake on FDG. This was a, a tumor as well confirmed by biopsy. Category four is pathologically proven or definite radiologic and clinical progression. In this case, you do clinical management slash treatment with or without biopsy. So this patient had a parotid neoplasm. Here it was on the original PET. Here it was on the original C2. You could see it's irregular, peripherally enhancing some necrotic or cystic change in the center. After treatment, a follow-up PET was performed. You could see it is now extending through the skin. So through the dermis and the epidermis, it has a more exophytic appearance, definitely increased in size, definitely more uptake. So this patient will proceed to a different treatment and it is definite clinical and radiologic progression. On the follow-up imaging, you can find the unexpected like new metastatic disease. This patient has a cancer of the epiglottis. You can see that irregular nodular contour of the right aspect of the epiglottis extending to that area epiglottic fold. Here it is on the FDG PET. On the follow-up scan post-treatment, unfortunately, this patient did well at the primary site, but now has level 3 lymphadenopathy and paratracheal mediastinal lymphadenopathy, as well as pulmonary nodules. All right, so for a practice case, we have a maxillary sinus squamous cell carcinoma. You can see this large invasive mass. It's involving the maxillary sinus extending into the nasal cavity invading into that PPF. It's going into that premaxillary soft tissues. It is going to the floor of the orbit. This was quite an extensive tumor. And here, as you'd expect, you have massive uptake on the FTG PET. On the first post-treatment scan, you see the flap in place, all of this architectural distortion from the maxillectomy and the flap being put in place. Posterior to the flap, there's this area of FTG uptake, but there's nothing really mass-like. It's right behind the flap. They just had extensive surgery. So it's something that you notice. Keep an eye on more inferiorly. You see no uh, abnormal uptake around the flap. On the MRI, you could see the flap in place. You see nothing in terms of mass-like enhancement. You have some enhancement around the surgical site, but nothing suspicious. You still have some fat planes. So, so far, not super exciting. This would be a category 2B. We do see some uptake. We do see some distortion. This could all be post-surgical, so it recommends a follow-up. Now on the short-term follow-up, second post-treatment scan, that area now has declared itself. There is now mass-like enhancement posterior to the flap in that infratemporal fossa involving that pterygoid musculature. Unfortunately, it's extended to the skull base in the Meckel's cave. You see thickening and nodular enhancement of the dura extending into the sphenoid sinus, and the FTG PET confirms abnormal uptake throughout the areas of abnormal enhancement on MRI. So this is a definite progression of disease. That is now a category four. So here is a flow chart of how to think about things in the NIRADS categories, starting from the primary site. And defining if it's something superficial and mucosal, if it's something deep, and you could follow the categories from there. And thank you for your time. These are the other categories that we're used to here in Florida. We have our categories of hurricanes and more in the Midwest. You get these categories of tornadoes.